Hello everyone and welcome to Let's Chat Survivor where we will be discussing Survivor Cambodia's second chance. My name is Saul and you can find me on Twitter at, at Perspective. And with me is my co-host, Mark. Hello everybody, my name is Mark and you can find me on Twitter at MarkApolo310. Awesome. Can't wait for the season to begin. Uh, as we can go ahead and discuss it with, all, with everyone here on, um, on the show. Just so you guys know, we are big and uh, huge Survivor super fans. Uh, we actually met through a Survivor and the Amazing Race uh, after show chat room. And, uh, you know, we were tweeting about it all, all season long, um, in preseason, and we decided to go ahead and make this uh, show for you guys. Now, I myself jumped onto Survivor right after the Super Bowl with uh, the Australian Outback, and I have not missed an episode since then. Uh, how about you, Mark? How did you start? Um, my first episode was actually back in uh, Borneo, about partway through the tribal phase. Um, so after about like three or four people got voted off and people started talking about it, that's when I started jumping in and, and started watching. And I haven't, I haven't missed any since then. So about like uh, episode six around there? Maybe uh, four to six. It was 15 years ago. Who the hell remembers? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, um, like we said, uh, we're going to be talking about Survivor Cambodia. Second chance, and we're going to talk first about what we know about the show, uh, what we um, can want to see, what we can expect. And um, first of all, we first of all, it's a different season from every other one. It's a returning player season, unlike all other seasons. Though we were told at the towards the end of Worlds Apart that we would be able to vote for these um, players to return from a list of 32. Well, technically 31 players because Mike Holloway was there, but he was an eventual winner, so that eliminated him. So, um, yeah, uh, what, what do you think about this um, chance for us to be able to, to vote for these players to come back in? Uh, I think it's, it's great that they waited until this season to, to do this for the very first time with Survivor. Um, they've done that before with um, another show on CBS, uh, Big Brother also did that way back then with Big, Big Brother Season 7, and that caused a big buzz as well, and I, I think with how social media and and um, how social media is going nowadays, it's, it's easier for them to run something like this and have enough people involved in the process. And so I think this is this is great, although some of our favorites got dropped in the process. But <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. We'll talk about that. <laughs> okay, and one other thing that will be changing is the way that the hidden immunity idol will be uh, hidden. Uh, previously, they were either hidden on Exile Island or in the camps. Uh, for the tribes. However, this season they will be hidden in clear daylight at the challenges. So anyone who has the guts to go for them can go for them. However, everyone is going to be seeing them. Everyone's going to have their eyes on them as they're as they're doing it. Unless they can get do it um, very sneaky, I don't I don't see how in, how someone's going to do it without at least one person looking at them. Yeah, um, it really calls for some ninja stealth mode here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Um, I know. I know for a fact that it's not going to be just like with uh, with Russell, who just started, just walked away, and we're looking for it, or you know, just anybody who just started looking for it in random places at the camp when they were supposedly going to get water, or going to go tree mail or something like that. They're going to have to wait till they um, they get to the challenges. They will be looking for it, I'm pretty sure, at the camp. Once they find what they believe to be the hidden immunity idol, it's not going to be the idol. It's going to be the clue. And yes. by finding the clue, that's when they're going to be able to actually locate the idol out there on the challenges. Yep. And one other thing on this is that no two idols will look alike. So we're going to have multiple idols. One's going to be look official, nice, and neat. One's going to look like crap. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I think that's going to help out with, um, with deceiving people. What do you think? Oh, so, so there's going to be a fake idol included with the real idol. Well, it's not fake. It's real, but it's going to look like, it's going to look okay. like a stick. <laughs> okay. Remember the stick it's, that from Caramon? I mean, not from oh, Caramon, we, Micronesia, I'm sorry. Micronesia. We, we all remember that yeah, stick. Yeah, that stick, yeah. <laughs> okay, so it, it, it can look, it's not going to look official but it's going to be a real idol. It's, and it's really going to be on the other players to really decide, is it real, is it not real? Um, that can't be an idol, you know? And then you'll yeah. have this other idol to compare it to, and that it's going to look like the idol that we, we're accustomed to looking at nice and, and, and 
uh, what's a um, necklace or something, you know? Yeah, um, I I think this will also um, embrace and the contestants to try to make their own. <laughs> I think it'll be very interesting to see what they come up with. Yeah, and we've seen some pretty good idols in the past, and we'll talk about about that a little bit later on with one of our contestants that are will be on the show this season. Mm -hmm. Okay, so well let's let's go ahead and and talk about the actual tribes. Um, yes. We know that at the beginning of the, of the show we're going to have two tribes. Uh, one of them will be the Takeo tribe, which will be wearing green. Mm -hmm. And um, we, ha we have the ten people that will be on that tribe here. First we have um, Abby, Maria, Abby Maria Gomez. She was from mm -hmm. the Philippines. And yes. uh, do you have anything uh, to say about her? Um, well, she is the Brazilian bomb. <laughs> I'm not going to say bombshell because she just blows up. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, beautiful on the outside, and um, but don't don't get her mad because she'll she'll come <laughs> at you. <ya. laughs> yeah, yeah. She yeah. Um, she finished fifth in her season. Uh, she had uh, eight tribal immunities. However, she only participated in two of those uh, two of those immunities partially because she actually injured her ACL, tore her ACL in the marooning at the very first episode. So she was, you know, hob hobbling around during the whole, sh the whole season, but I don't know if she would have done that much of a difference either way, um, if she was in the actual challenges. Yeah, we um, haven't seen her in in top physical shape um, during the game, so it will be interesting to see what she will be able to do this time around. Uh, but sh if she's not proving herself in the beginning with with the, uh, in the tribal phase, then I think she'll get voted out pretty soon. Yeah, I think her big thing to do this season is to stay under the radar and do not blow up on anybody, do not yeah. go off on anybody, unless he, unless she's uh, trying to use that to her advantage, which I don't see that working. But, you know, you, ne you never know. You never know. <laughs> okay, so the next thing, the next one we have is a classic player, uh, Mr. Jeff Varner from Australia Outback, the first season that I that I watched. Um, what, do, what do you... How do you feel about Jeff? Um, recalling him from his original season, uh, there wasn't really... I mean, he, he was a big personality, but he really wasn't able to do much in the game. But this time around, um, through, through everything that he's been doing on, on Twitter and Facebook and all the social media, I think he was... He's more prepared this time yeah. around. And, I, and again, he, he's been waiting for this um, opportunity to play again for 15 years, so yeah, so he he is ready to go, and he, according to him on some interviews, he has a secret preseason alliance ready, <laughs> ready to go. So yeah, we'll see how far that takes him. And one of those was actually with Shane Powers, who unfortunately didn't make it, but we'll talk about that later. Yes. Um, yeah, he finished 10th in the season. It's not very high up, but it's higher than some of the other people that made it onto the season. But mm -hmm. his real downfall was when Michael Scoopin went out. Yeah. Because uh, they were, because the Kucha tribe was ahead 6 to 5 at that point. And yes. they would have gone to 6 and 4 if they would have won that, that immunity idol. But with, with Michael Scoopin getting injured and getting evacuated, evacuated that left them at five of five. So when they merged and got that tie vote, it came down to the past votes, which yeah. nobody would have known who had votes against them if it weren't for another one of our players that is returning the season. And we'll talk about that when, when we talk about her. Yes. Okay. So he was the second player to ever get voted off because of a tie vote and the previous votes against tiebreaker. Yes. And yeah, like you said, he did. We, we weren't really sure exactly what, what we to expect from him the first time around. He, the first time we see him on the episode, on the, on the first episode, he's uh, stumbling around. He's feeling weak. He feels that like he says he's gonna throw up. He's like, he's sick. That even on the plane there, he was feeling sick. So I don't know if um, there's some stories as to why they were feeling sick, all of them. But uh, we won't, we won't go into into detail on that. But yeah, um, I hope to, I hope that he has a lot more game this season around. He was very fun for the little time he was there. Um, I, I hope to see a lot of them this season. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have Kelly Wentworth from San Juan del Sur. Uh, she's actually the one that has the least amount of days than anybody else coming in for a second, for a second chance. So she actually only lasted uh, 13 days um, yeah. and placed in 14th. Uh, what do you have uh, anything to say about her? 
Well, she she was a super fan coming into San Juan del Sur. Um, but uh, because she was such a big fan, she got targeted by by another person, and I, that was unfortunate. Uh, they didn't really have a better reason to vote her out besides she knows the game well. And it, I think in a season where everybody knows the game, she's going to be less of a threat. Uh, and I think she, she's pretty physically able as well, so um, I'm excited to see what comes from her. Yeah. And she was actually pretty good in challenges. It wasn't. It wasn't like she was uh, just getting thrown around in challenges. She was. She no. was. Uh, she was pretty strong in ch- challenges, and I think she could have gone a lot further if it weren't for this season. That season's twist, which was the blood versus water. Uh, yeah. She was with her her father on the other tribe, and when that tribe mix up happened, she ended up in the same tribe as her father, who did not help her out by causing a, a lot of um, a lot of ruckus on camp. Yeah. Which in turn they they turned on her because of him, <laughs> although she'll say she it was not his fault. But I mean, what, what are you gonna say? It's your it's your father. You don't, you're not gonna keep yeah. uh, not keep the, keep that against them. Um, I think she has a chance to go far as long as um, she doesn't try to overplay because she is a super fan. People know she's smart. As long as she doesn't try too too much too much, um, or if she is, as long as she stays under the radar, she can she can go further. Uh, further in the game, she's. I, I, I feel she can go further than Abby Maria. I mean, don't don't fix what isn't broken. I yeah. think what she did last time was good, if yeah. not for for unforeseen circumstances. And so she keeps her game that way. I think she she'll at least they make the merge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, then we have Kelly's Wigglesworth, uh, who is the original. Yep. Yeah, the original Ooh. runner up from Borneo. Oh uh, wow. What could we? Mm say about her what 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 do you think well through some of the preseason interviews that she's done she appears to not really care that much about everything that's going on but something about the tone of her voice when she she was she was doing interviews that makes me think there's something up her sleeve yeah yeah definitely yeah Definitely. She claims not to have a TV. She claims she hasn't seen anything. Uh, not having a TV doesn't mean you don't have a don't have a computer. <laughs> doesn't mean you can't order DVDs to watch. Um, so, and she's supposedly a part of this preseason alliance with Jeff Varner. So yeah, that's what I heard too. That she had um, had an alliance with Jeff Varner uh, and a couple mm-hmm. of other people actually. But she's yeah. trying to. I don't know if she. Um, I don't know if she's being sincere. I don't think she's being sincere, and she says that she doesn't really care about about it, or she's or she's just going just to go. I think she's going to be a strong player. Um, definitely someone. Remember back in her original season, she she won five tribal immunities with their tribe, then five individual immunities. Yeah, so running through was, her to, to the end of the game. To the end of the yep. game, she she was the first one, first player ever to win that that final um, immunity. Um, she took the wrong. Well, I don't know. I can't say she took the wrong person because I don't think she would have won either way. But yeah. um, you know, she, she's a strong player. Hopefully, um, hopefully she can do it better this season. This season, I think mm-hmm. uh, people will hold her to a little bit of variance. Uh, you know, hold her up higher than anybody else because she is one of the original yeah. original players. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, um, do you have anything else to say about Wigglesworth? Uh, she could be dangerous and, and you know, through the year she's become a businesswoman and I think some of the business acumen and, and, and cut from this might come through here yeah. and, and do her well, I think. So we'll see what happens. And actually she still holds, she still, well, she's tied for the, for the record and the most individual immunity wins with uh, Jenna Maraska, who's a winner, mm-hmm. and Kim Spradlin, who is also a winner. So, yes. so it's not an easy thing to do to get five wins. I don't know, I don't know if there's actually a... Uh, did Mike Holloway get five or six, you know? Something like that, but not in a row. Yeah, so she, her, her, her run was, was is, is up there with, um, with the top, top runs or immunity, immunity wins. Yeah. And, well, next we have one of our favorites, actually. Um, it's. I, I struggle with her name. I think you said it was a uh, Fage. Fage. Pagey. Pa- 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 yeah. pa- I've always had. I, I actually called her uh, uh, Fage. I don't know. Eh. <laughs> I never knew her name, but um, people yeah. call her all sorts of things. She's used to it. Yeah, she's used to it. Well, what's it? Uh, they called her Phoebe. <laughs> so, 
So we'll, we'll um, yeah, we'll go ahead hey. and um, and talk about Fiji or Fiji. Okay, I, I'm gonna be messing up her name all all this podcast. Uh, right. She's from China. Uh, she plays fifth, but yeah. she, she was small back in China. She was a, a tiny a tiny woman, you know. But yeah, you know, she was actually a pretty good player, right? She was. She was pretty good, although socially she was not. She was a little awkward. <laughs> yeah, she, she. She was the drama that season. Y- and, yeah. Yeah. E- even on social media right now, there's a lot of people trolling her because they they just think she's a bitch. But, you know. Eh, it's it's been, what eight years now since China. Yeah. Right, right, right. Uh, yeah, and, and and she she has her own business as well, and then I. And and she she is very active on Twitter, talking about you know second chance and and previous seasons and things like that. And uh, she has turned a lot of people around um, in support of her. So I hope she doesn't get too anxious going into the game, and she tries to do too much. Uh, if she doesn't, then I think she could do pretty well here. I think as long as she doesn't fight with anybody like she did in the, in the uh, her original season. I think she'll be good. Um, I just remember she just had the luck of being on this tribe that just didn't want to do anything. Uh, the very first time we see her in China, um, where she's talking actually about the game, uh, mm-hmm. she's talking to Frosty and, and she's like, we're in a tribe that just wants to hang out. They don't want to do anything. <laughs> and then we, then we cut to, and we cut to, um, to her and she's just like this is the lazy tribe and then they do a montage of her, of her tribe just messing around running around doing um, you know and then what happens they shows them being rained on with no shelter to go under so it's yeah. like and that that's pretty much how it went for her in the first part of the season before the tribal swap um mm. and she would didn't really have numbers at all and mm. after the merge she went a lot further than people were thinking she was going to go because she didn't have the numbers and I, w- I remember rooting for her, what, just hoping that she would pull it off and, and just make it to the end and, and hopefully win it. But, yeah. you know, um, that didn't happen. But, you know, hopefully she can uh, do something this season. And uh, I, I think the weather back then, uh, when they were taping China, um, was, it was really stormy. It was, it was wet all the time, according to yeah. some of her interviews. And I, 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 I think that was some of the problem. For her as well. That's why she was so grouchy all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you have the whole thing of not eating properly, you know. So and there is that as well. Yeah, <laughs> and 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 she she said that this is gonna be pretty much a, a vacation for her because the weather's much nicer there in Cambodia than it was in China. So we'll see. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if you noticed, but the last couple of seasons haven't had as much rain as the first couple of seasons. So mm-hmm. yeah, I can I can see that. Yeah. So. The next person on our list here is one of the sure. ultimate super fans. <laughs> yeah. Shireen. Shireen Oskui. Yes. Uh, um, from San Francisco. She just yeah. finished up. The Yahoo she, Millionaire. <laughs> and we'll talk about that in a little bit right now. Uh, she's from World Apart. That, the season that just ended. And what can we say about her? She's a character, right? She is a character. And... and um, I don't know. Um, some people that went back out there immediately after they came back um, have a hard time adjusting their game. Just they, they just thought, oh, this game I played was, was okay. It got me back. So let me do that again and see if I can win again, uh, see if I can go farther with the same strategy. And um, she needs to keep her cool. She needs to. Yeah, she just needs to 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 keep calm. Yeah. And and I, I she'll be a she'll she'll be a target going in. Um that's not to be avoided, but um she can talk away um <laughs> into other people's hearts. I think she yeah. she has a shot. Yeah. Um I think what we talked about, you said she's a millionaire already. She said it in her final tribal when she was yeah. uh, when, before she um, voted I think it was right yeah. mm-hmm. um, I think that was a bad mistake don't move yeah well she didn't know she was even coming back at that time but 
Yeah, she didn't know. But it, it's really, really going to put her as a target. Could be one of like she's not. She doesn't need the money. But there's still other people out there who don't need the money. But you know, they can exactly. still use it. Um, <laughs> but I, I mean, I remember the first time I saw her. She, I thought she was going to get voted out on the first vote out in her season. Mm-hmm. She ended up in eighth place. Um, she. <laughs> They were, I remember, I remember that uh, red tribe, I forgot the name, a Messiah tribe uh, for yes. World Apart. They were uh, so ahead of everybody else at that, at that very first immunity, and it gets to the puzzle, and she can't figure it out. And it's, the, it's supposed to be the easy puzzle. Yeah. And um, that's when the, 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 uh, the no collars and the, and the blue collars came and, and uh, caught up, and, and um, they, the way they went. And I really thought she was going to be gone. I really did. And yeah. When they didn't get get, um, get rid of her, the second episode, third episode, I was really, really getting tired of her, just because she was so. But then, but then I thought to myself, she's a super fan. That's probably the yeah. way I would be acting if I went out there. <laughs> I would be acting like, oh my god, I'm out here. Uh, I can't believe I'm out here. I would try to hide it, but I think inside I would be feeling feeling that I don't think I just think that she didn't hold it in. She just let it out, and um, it didn't do any favors for her. I think she lucked out in the beginning of the game because there were two other guys on her tribe that were playing more aggressive than she was, and and that turned them into a target. And she had um, some. Yeah, so so she lucked out there. Otherwise, uh, I I didn't think she would make the merge. Yeah, well, I think if it wasn't for So on on her tribe in the very first episode, I mm-hmm. think she would have gone. But uh, I think yeah. So overplayed her, and she went away, and Shuri made it all the way to the merge and into eighth place. So now she's back in for for the season so yeah and one of my favorites is actually coming up next uh from survivor kagion it's uh mm-hmm. spencer bletso yes the young lad the young lad <laughs> he's young actually lad. Uh, i believe he's the youngest the male on on this season at um he, let me check yes he is yeah what he's a 22 23 he's 23 now 23 yeah he's yeah he, um, so he was what 20 when uh 21 when he when he went out there the first time around he was twenty one. Um, yep. He was he was my that season's uh, he was my favorite for that season. Um, mainly, he does have a I think he does have a little bit of, of an ego to him because uh, he is so smart. Okay. Mm-hmm. But um, he, he he was on the brain stripe. But come on, this this Kagayan season was brawn versus brain versus beauty, and that brain stripe was uh, supposedly has an IQ average of one thirty. So being on the brain strap, we would think that they were going to be able to just handle everything that was thrown at them. But they were on the tribe that really was n- everything but brains. They, they, they didn't really prove themselves. <laughs> yeah, no, they didn't. They, they lost, what, the first, um, first three challenges? First two challenges? First, and then a, three yeah. out of four. It was three out of four. They lost three out of four challenges. Um, so they were decimated to only three people left. And then they were um, switched around. Um, well, brilliant not switched around. They were dissolved. Well, it was a both, right? It was, a dissol- it was dissolving that tribe and then actually mixing them up with the other ones. Yeah. And they had the luck. They had the luck of actually ending up all together in the same tribe. Mm-hmm. But then they got, he got, pretty much he got um, backslapped <laughs> by one of our other um, players coming back. And we'll talk about her later, but later on. Yeah. So chaos um, is coming. Chaos is coming. <laughs> <laughs> and I think as long as um, I want him to, I would like him to get to the finals because uh, I do like him that much. But I think he's too smart for his own good. I think people know he's too smart. Uh, he's going to be a target for sure. Um, so, and, and we've got to remember, he's also the one that stood up in front of everybody and told, do not vote for Wu. And we'll talk about Wu a little bit later on too. But he, so, um, I'm hoping he goes a little bit further, but I, I don't have too, too much high hopes for him to go a long way. Uh, he's going to have a, a tough battle ahead of him. A lot of players um, have him as a target uh, in interviews. and um, But, you know, the the Spencer-Tasha story was, was just so... It, it, was, it, was, it was great to watch. It was a great underdog story to watch. And the two of them being back again, even though they're on separate tribes right now, I, I think people... People are gonna be watching for that um, yeah. if they if they make it far enough in the game to link up together again. Well, so we'll see what happens there. Let's hope that they that people don't see that coming and 
and target them right off the bat. We can't let them get together again. Well, <laughs> there, there are three people from their season coming back, so... Well, there's four people. Four people? Yeah, Wu's back. What am I? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll, we'll uh, talk about Wu when you get there. Out of mind. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about Wu when we get there, yeah. Yeah. Um, we, the next person we have is Vitas. Uh, how do you say that? Baskovskis? Bus, uh, I think Ter Terry is up next. Terry Dietz. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm tipping ahead. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. Terry Dietz is the yes. next person up. Mm -hmm. um, and he, he's one of actually one of my favorites. Um, what, do, what do you have to say about Terry? He was, he was very physically able. He was one of the, one of the strongest um, uh, elder men that we had that season. Um, he was he was proving to be a threat, and even through the merge, I, I think people start targeting him um, after they merged, and and he was able to just pull it out and eventually get third place, which is nothing to see that. Yeah, um, I remember he was one of the, the first one. Actually, I think he was the first player that I chose that was just going, going, and going, and like he's gonna do it, he's gonna do it. And finally, at the at the very end, he fell. Uh, like no, I was I was I just remember like I oh, can't believe this. So I don't yeah. I didn't like the winner. I didn't like the runner up because of that, but mm -hmm. not because I don't like them as players, but because um, because they voted out they Terry. voted out Terry. Yeah, and but then uh, you you had to be you have to be crazy not to vote out Terry at final three because yeah, yeah, was, there's no way you can win against this guy in final three. He's too charming. Yeah, too yeah. charming and too strong. As much as, as much as I like Terry, if I was there, I would have done the same thing. Um, yep. there's, there's no other way. You're you're not gonna you're not gonna win against Terry. Um, yep. I remember he was the oldest. He was the oldest. Um, he was one of the oldest because he's not the oldest. Because I think uh, I turned it down, Dan was uh, one of the oldest, and they had Bruce on that tribe as well. I think he was uh, yep. older, but he was on the older men's tribe, and mm -hmm. he will be the oldest out in Cambodia. He's yes. he's actually still tied with the most uh, single um, immunity wins. In a season with five, so so there you go. To, um, going back to the question we had earlier, he's tied with Kobe, Tom, Ozzy, and Mike Holloway. So I mean, those the names of, on that list. I mean, they're they're what survivor legends. Yeah. Uh, even yeah. those what they didn't win, um, they're survivor what legends. Um, he actually has let's see, um, he has the record for the most post merge wins in a single season, including. Uh, reward and all that. He has eight wins after the after the merge, so I mean, he's got a lot of wins. Um, and he was the second survivor to actually went to find the hidden immunity immunity idol. Um, the first one when it was actually set in motion into from the beginning of the game. Um, but we'll we'll see. Well, hopefully he does good. Uh, he's one of my favorites. I uh, hope he goes far. Yeah. All right. Okay. Now we have Vitas. <laughs> yes. Um, Vitas comes from Blood vs. Water, the, the mm -hmm. uh, first uh, Blood, Blood vs. Water. He was out there with his brother. Um, Aras? He, he, Aras is one of the other ones that has people say his name differently. Aras, 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 you know. I've heard, I've seen his, I've heard his name said a couple times. And mm -hmm. even, I'm pretty sure even Vitas has, a, <laughs> has a, his name oh. uh, butchered all the time as well. But yeah. uh, he finished 10th. Uh, I think he could have gone further. If he wouldn't have gotten back together with his brother after the after the switch, because um, you remember they had a big rival, they weren't showing that they were gonna work together at all at the beginning of the, the, beginning of the season. The whole show, the whole the whole thing was them battling. Was I don't like my brother. <laughs> he's been, he's been the show off. He's been the the better younger brother since the, the very beginning. Um, yeah, but once but they. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Oh no, the pe people saw through that immediately. They, yeah. They're like, they're not gonna vote each other out. They're not gonna go against <laughs> each other. And yeah. especially one of the brothers has already won the game before, has already taken the million. Um, that only makes your target that much bigger, yeah. I, I think. Yeah. And and they eventually had to take him out. I mean, he he was he was physically fit, and he had good alliances going through uh, on. Both until they, they they had to vote him out. <laughs> yeah, he had alliances. He had alliances on both tribes mm -hmm. after because of the of the switch up, and yep. I remember him being they him showing him with with Aras on, on the uh, on the mountaintop, or I'm not quite sure if it's a mountaintop, but on a cliff or whatever they were at, and they were just talking back and forth, and and 
they, they were pretty confident on what they were going to do. But while they were doing that, Tyson was out here um, convincing everybody to vote, vote them out. So yeah. I think that was – and they didn't see it coming. So I really, really – I was really pulling for them. I didn't want Tyson to win. Unfortunately, he won. Uh, good, great. I actually like the guy. It's just that uh, I didn't want him to win. <laughs> but I would have I would have rather seen Vitas um, go a little bit further in Blood versus Water. Yeah. All right, so we got our last uh, member of the Takeo tribe, which is Wu, <laughs> mm. which is uh, the one that uh, be easy to forget, kind of, even though <laughs> he, made it, he made it all the way to the end and he was a runner-up. Um, How can you forget the guy when he, a year ago, gave away his million <laughs> to somebody else that should have been in the final? Yes. But he's there anyway. Um, <laughs> Not to take away from, from Tony's win in, in Kagayan, Kagayan. I, can't, I can always miss on that one. Because um, he did a lot of work that, that season, but yes. he had no business in the final tribal. Uh, Wu sh well, should have taken Cass, yes. um, which we'll talk about as well a little bit later on, like we said. But he had this, this whole thing about being loyal, being righteous and all that, you know. Um, although I've heard other stories as far as um, I don't do you did you know do you know his nickname? Uh, what was his nickname? Weasel Wu. Oh yeah, there was that. Okay, so yeah. I, when I was researching uh, uh, Wu, I actually found on Inside Survivor, and this is according to them. This is not. This is, hasn't really been you know confirmed even by Survivor himself. He got that nickname because he broke into the production producers camp and stole food and shelter and water um, from them. And uh, oh. people found out, and so they clearly call him a little weasel. Cause he, he, and he, apparently he did it more than once. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, and another thing is that I didn't think he was going to make it to the end because, remember, we, if you remember, he fell off the tree. And... Um, the previews to that made it seem a lot worse than what it really was when we saw it on, on the episode. But according to him, the, the survivor medical team was actually really considering pulling him from the game after he fell from that tree. Really? So, yeah. So it was a lot worse of a fall than, we, than we're led to believe. So mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I mean, when I see, when I see Wu going back, I just do, I just do the, you know, like, yeah, I, I, can't believe he, yeah, I can't believe people <laughs> voted back in. When he did that much that big of a mistake at the very end, yeah. but I mean, you know, you never know. He might, he might, he might, change, he might be different this time around. He might be someone we like, but I don't know. Yeah, I wouldn't bet on that. <laughs> <laughs> so that who will be Wu? I, I don't think he's going to change in this game. <laughs> so yeah. that is the Takeo tribe. That's the the first ten people that uh, that will be on that green. Will be wearing that green buff. Mm -hmm. Next, we have the Bayonne tribe, which will be wearing pink, which yes. I believe is the first time that they use pink as a tribe color. Uh, I think they used it before as a merge color, but not ne never as an individual tribe. Mm -hmm. So, um, very first uh, person we want to talk about here is uh, Andrew Savage. One of one of I can't say he was my favorite during the Pearl Islands, mainly because he was on the opposite end of Rupert. <laughs> And, uh, You're a Rupert fan. I'm a big Rupert fan. Um, he was on the Morgan tribe. He finished tenth. He was he was very uh, he was very strong. You can tell. And um, he is he was very loyal and and so forth and trustworthy to the players that were with him. Mm -hmm. um, he wasn't so nice to the people that that were on the outs of the alliance or who who he thought were weak. He just didn't have time for them. It, it, it's what it felt like. Um, he is and that most, was his major downfall. I that think. was his major downfall because um, he, those people who he voted out, as you know, came back and uh, and that twist of that season. Yeah. Uh, do you remember that twist? The outcast twist, uh, where the first six people that got voted out came back as a separate tribe, and um, they competed against the two competing tribes. And if the outcast um, tribe won, then they get to vote two of their tribe members back into the game and that uh, those were Lil and Burton I believe it was Burton yep um, and, and that threw Andrew's game off the rails yep. and 
and he he went berserk after that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he was the next person voted out. I mean, right, yeah. right after after that they merged. Uh, the next um, was it the next day they merged? Do you remember? I believe so. Uh, yeah, was, uh, yeah. Yeah, the next day they merged, and um, you, you know they went five five. So it, they they could have still made a play, but since he had treated Lil so bad um, previously, she flipped on him. So I, yeah. I'm really hoping, I really hope that he does um, go far, but I'm really hoping that he doesn't treat people the same way he treated them the very first time. I think he's smart enough to have learned from that. Yeah, that old, older and wiser, I think. Now he yeah. does, he did say he wants to uh, target those that he didn't feel were trustworthy in the first season, which um, I, can, I get, but at the same time, you can never trust what people are gonna do based on their first season. So you never know. Someone who was trustworthy in the first season may not be trustworthy the second season, as we've we've seen in the past, or the other way around. Okay. So the second, the next person we have here is Sierra, Sierra mm -hmm. Easton from Blood vs. Water, who yeah. uh, we all know um, did pretty good. She's known mostly because she voted out her own mom, and I, I'll put that in quotation mark. Yeah. Uh, she finished comes with some fine print. <laughs> yeah, that comes with the fine print. <laughs> yeah, like I said, she finished fifth. Um, I think she'll have a target on her back. I think she she is a lot, a lot smarter than than people uh, want to give her credit. She did a lot of a lot of things in that season. Um, what do you have uh, to say about her? Um, with with that trouble council that eliminated um, her mom. Uh, she didn't really need to vote for her mom, but she did it anyways, just to show her alliance that she was with them. Um, and that's what makes her dangerous. She's willing to do anything to further herself in the game, and I think other players see that. Um, was voting her, out her mom a big deal? Not necessarily, because um, her mom was on the way out anyway. So it wasn't her doing it wasn't her telling others to, hey, you guys, vote up my mom. No, and um, so so there's that. And she is on some people's hit list yeah. going to the game. And she really needs to watch her back going to the game. I, I think she, she's she got some battles ahead of her. So we'll see what happens with her. I think she has a really good way of lying to people. She's able to lie to them. Um, remember, I remember her talking to Katie Collins, who was the daughter of another legend, uh, Mrs. Tina Weston, um, where Katie was on the way out already. She had to pretend she had the idol, and she tells Sierra, I have the idol. And Sierra's just like, no, you don't. How do you know I don't have the idol? Because I have it. And mm -hmm. she just came up with that just like right on the spot, and Katie just crumbled. You do? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, um, if Katie could have just kept kept it going. She might have been able to fool Sierra. I don't think Sierra would have been fooled either way. I think yeah. she she knew that it was just a hell, hell mary that um, that Katie was throwing. But um, I think I think she does have a target on the back. But if she can get past the uh, the um, initial stage, I think she can go far. Yeah. All right, so next we have Mr. Jeremy Collins from uh, San Juan del Sur, Blood vs. Water 2. And um, this one, just like the very first one, it's the loved ones um, playing against each other. She, he, uh, this one was uh, different because they had a, he had to actually um, do the challenge against his wife. In the, yeah. to, to, and he actually sent her to, <laughs> to exile. exile. Mm -hmm. And... Um, it was it was one of the main reasons why she ended up going uh, later on. Um, I can't say it was his fault that, that she got she was uh, she got voted off, but I, I'm pretty sure he in his emotions it was that it was his fault that that she ended up getting voted off. Um, I don't remember if she was um, first. I don't think she was first, but I think what's her name? Um, not, not, what's her name? Nadia was first. Am I right? Yeah, Nadia, yeah. Nadia was first. And, yeah, and that was a season where a lot of people got targeted because they had 
close to the hidden immunity idol. Yeah. And that was that um which was really refreshing to see because we don't see that kind of strategy very often. And sometimes when people get those immunity idol clues, you, you kinda wanna link up with them just yeah. to see if you can get the idol yourself. But uh everybody was just just taking taking clues out for like people started burning clues and yeah. <laughs> I was like, huh, what's going on here? <laughs> yeah, and then he was really he got he got on the wrong side of numbers when the tribal switch. Yeah. Um, so, but he was still. I mean, it, it, he was still had a chance to to do, to do it. But I think his um, he confronted. I think it was was named John about the um, about the media idol, and John decided to just um, turn on him. Right? Was, I think it was John who had it. Do you remember? Yeah. Uh, not clearly right now, no. I think it was John. I've been in front of me. But anyways, John, yeah. um, they, they betray him, and he goes, he goes home. Um, I really think as long as he doesn't get his emotions, get the better of him, he can go far. Um, he just needs to stay in control. <laughs> I think he's yeah. strong enough. I think he's, he's able to um, do what he needs to do. He'll go to the end, and, and I'm, I'm, he's, he'll go... At least, at least uh, to the final four, I believe. Okay. Uh, do you have anything else to say about Jeremy? I'm kind of on the fence with him, to be honest. <laughs> uh, it can go either way. He can he can either go out first or or, or go all the way, and um, it just depends he, on how he how he reacts. Cause he is a he's a little bit emotional, so um, he can. He can, if he can stay cool, he can he can go further. If he doesn't, he can be outwardly. He can be very charming when he wants to be. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we'll see. Okay. So next we have a uh, Joe Anglum from Worlds Apart. He's a fan favorite from that season. Um, I personally don't don't see why he is a fan favorite. I guess he's charming and, and so forth. Uh, but I really don't really don't like him that much as much as other people. Um, what do you think about Joe? We we barely saw him through the season. Uh, you know that I guess he was one of the pretty boys in the season, and that's why that's how he got his fandom. Um, mm-hmm. He didn't even uh, he didn't even campaign to come back. He he just kind of sit back and he he kind of knew he was coming back already for some reason. Um, yeah. I don't know. Uh, it's not that I didn't like Joe uh, when when he was in Worlds Apart. It's just that I don't think he did enough. I don't think he tried enough, other than making a very convincible um, fake idol that he gave to Mike. Um, mm-hmm. It looked like he went out to like Hot Topic and just got the <laughs> he oh, got, gosh. A, got yeah, I got a <laughs> necklace from there. I don't know. It was it was it, it was pretty good, and I think that's what he makes. That's what he does for a living, anyways. Right back in the day, he was um, making he was making jewelry on the streets and like that. I think um, so. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, um, he. I think I think he will be a target because of how charming he is. Um, I think he needs to just lay low, uh, not cause any trouble. I don't think he'll cause any trouble either way, but he just needs to not threaten anybody, um, or he's gonna be he's gonna be an early boot. Um, I think this is gonna be a season where where players are not only competing for the grand prize, they're also, some of them are competing for airtime. Yeah. And, <laughs> and if hooking up with Joe Anglum means airtime for them, I think he might get some friends here this way. Um, this will be interesting because we don't really know enough about how he's going to play to really say anything about it. We'll just have to watch and, and see what he does. Yeah, uh, I can see. I can see that. Let's mm-hmm. uh, let's take him along to see if um, we can be on on TV for a little bit longer. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so next we have Chaos Chaos Cat Cast. Chaos Cast. Who oh, really boy. was one of the players that on this <laughs> list? I just saw like, oh no, 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 no. Uh, I mean, she but did. You knew she played. She was coming back. Yeah, she she. You knew she was me, coming back. I don't blame her for what she did. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I do because it, she got she got my two people from that that season in Kagayan uh, voted out. Um, she left them without, without the number. She turned on them. She was with uh, Spencer and with Tasha, and she's the one that decided to join Tony's alliance. Uh, but 
she was only looking out for her own butt, but yeah. You know, I mean, I mean, it's. it's I, I understand it. I understand it. Um, but as being what's it called, um, selfish, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah, I want. I, I wanted Spencer and Tasha to keep going, and and she really was the one that that threw the the wrench there into their yeah. into game plan. Um, I I think if if Andrew Savage is really um, going for getting the people out that he believes are are not trustworthy. I think she can be a very early target for him. I know a lot of people do not want that to happen because they she is good TV for for everything that's going on, for everything she does. She is good TV. Um, yeah. Do you have anything else to say about Cass? Um, in short, she's just a wild card, and. You're, you'll never know what she's going to do next. And I think that's what makes her exciting TV. And uh, she might go farther in the game than we think because of this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so uh, it'll be interesting. <laughs> she to needs to know, yeah, she just needs to know when to turn on the, the, the chaos and when to turn it off. Because yeah. if she turns it on too early, it's going to be a disaster for her. If she turns it on in the right moments, she can use it at her advantage and and um, keep going. So it's just really up to her when when um, when she goes, I guess. <laughs> yep. All right. So we have Mr. Keith Nail from San Juan del Sur, Blood vs. Water Two, who was actually the the fourth. Uh, he finished in fourth, uh, mm-hmm. and he actually won mo- the most um, player most challenges of any player that season, which is which was I think surprising. Um, that he did so was, good in the challenges. It was pretty shocking yeah. that and he I, was able to do that well. And I actually, I, I, I saw myself actually cheering for him, even though he wasn't the best player in the strategy part. He no. Was, um, very, well, stick to the plan. Stick to the plan, yes. <laughs> um, I mean, it, it, if it wasn't for him shouting stick to the plan, they would have the been able to would have, yep. taken over. Because um, that, that, that caused Natalie to tell John, Use your idol, mm-hmm. and which uh, he ended up using his idol as well. That team, that team tribal, and son Wesley goes home that night. Um, actually, and I think I, I think I remember he actually offered Wes his idol before the tribal, and Wes told him, "No, it's that's yours. You found it." And um, so I don't know if he would have given that idol to Wes, we we might not see Keith back here, and he's actually the one that called Fee, uh, I can't think I'm color Fiji because I can't. I can't pronounce her name, but he's the one that actually called her Phoebe. Um, so, I don't know. Do you have anything else to say about Keith? Not much, honestly. Not much. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, uh, we, we can move on now. Yeah. <laughs> so, we have one of the other classic uh, players coming up uh, in Kimmy Kappenberg. And mm-hmm. what can we not say about Kimmy? Um, wh- mm. do, what do you remember about Kimmy? Oh, she... She was all about the chickens. All the chickens. Vegetarian. <laughs> all about the chickens. Yeah, she she was vegetarian. She, uh, vegan, was she? Yeah, she was vegan. Yeah, uh, then vegan. The finger wagging incident, I think, is is what she was most well known for, along with Leisha. Um, but I mean, Alicia already came back in All Stars, and that's I think that's why she was on the ballot this time. But Kimmy, oh Kimmy. <laughs> yeah, I mean that was that was the first really big fight of Survivor ever. Uh, mm-hmm. There there had been uh, fights before, but never like this. Or she just went off. <laughs> oh I, yeah, uh, I, it got really personal really yeah. quick. <laughs> uh, I mean, um, the very first thing we even hear about her on the Australian Outback is, I think it was um, Nick, who talks about talking about Kimmy, talking about someone else, like Nick saying. Kimmy doesn't can't stand Deb, <laughs> and then it oh, goes up to her. It's not that Deb's, uh, Deb's a bad person. I just can't. I just can't see myself talking uh, talk, talking to her outside the, outside of Survivor, because I think that's when Deb was trying to control everything. But she really has a trouble with authority figures. She had trouble with Deb when Deb tried to go ahead and um, take the the tribe and you know, take leadership of the tribe and get to the to the camp. And then when she was gone, she had trouble with Mike. Um, she didn't. She didn't like Mike being the, the authority figure there. Uh, she's a little bit older, so maybe um, she can um, make a little bit further. I know. 
and she's actually the reason why Mr. Jeff Warner was the one booted, up, vote, uh, booted because she's the one that leaked the information to Ogacore that he had votes against him. I don't remember seeing that on the show, but I remember um, that they've talked about it later on, like afterwards um, in, in um, chat rooms and stuff like that. But um, wh- do you remember anything else about her? Uh, again, she's somebody else that we didn't really see enough of her strategy to really know what she's going to do out here. Um, if she has a good preseason alliance going in, and if they stick to it, uh, I think she can make the merge because people don't see her as a strategic threat. Yeah, and mm-hmm. I think I think time has will t- tell us that will tell us if she grew up um, from being so against the authority figures in the tribe. Yeah. Uh, because she does have Andrew Savage, who is a leader. So um, if she if she doesn't go ahead and fight with him, she can she can stay in the tribe. If she fights with him, she might be one of the, the early ones. Uh, but you never know what what the with the All Star seasons they always have twists and, and things on. So we never know what what might happen in the with with the tribes. I mean, she wasn't married with kids when she played the first time, and and now she is. I think that kind of changes a person. When think? they when when they get married and they have kids, and I I think she's gonna have more of a mom instinct in her instead of the the, the little the, the the fiery you know. Fish might be a strong word, but <laughs> <laughs> she she had a she had a she had a little mean streak on her a little bit I think in yeah the, in the um, first season she was in. She seems to have mellowed out. Yeah, she did. Um, over the years, and I, and I, I just think she's gonna be one that people are gonna try to pull in to their alliance. Uh, so, if she doesn't blow up on anybody, I think the merge is possible for her. Yeah, I can see her getting to the merge. Yep. Okay, so next we have Monica Padilla. She was uh, in Survivor Samoa, and uh, she plays a seventh in there. I don't really have a lot to say about Monica. I can't. I can't. Um, I don't remember a lot about her in that season, but I do remember that she's the one that really called out Russell um, about having money, because um, you know he he was he really wanted to win that game, and she's the one that called him out. You already have money. You say at least you say you have money. Um, I, I don't yeah. really don't have much to say about Monica. I mean, she she was also one that was in an alliance with Russell as well. And I, I, I think getting linked to him in that way in the game uh, kind of cost her the game. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, well, she didn't really play her own game the first time around. Yeah. And we'll see if she's able to. We'll, we'll see if she tries to play a different differently or if she stays under the radar or what does she do? Um, I think I think she can she can continue as long as she doesn't she doesn't become a threat to anybody. People will go mm-hmm. ahead and just like okay, you can keep continue coming. Yeah. Uh, she has no obvious connections to any other seasons that I know of, um, so I I can't really see her. I can't say that I, I I know who she's gonna hook up with with anybody else as far as an alliance goes. But you never know that, that might be um, that that might she might make some alliances out there. She might have made alliances out. Before. She needs to stay quiet and float. Yeah. Float to the merge and make her moves there. Um, <laughs> then, then she'll do pretty well. Um, just, just stay quiet. Just stay in the grass. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay, so we have Tasha Fox um, from. Oh, you. Yeah, we're you, we're we're keeping. You skipped uh, over the fishy. <laughs> fishy. We'll talk about fishing later. <laughs> okay, we'll talk about them later. Okay. Um, we have Tasha Fox from Kageon. the. Third member of the brains, um, brains tribe to uh, make it to the to the sw- to switch, and actually the, another person that got betrayed by Chaos Cast. And it's interesting that they are both in the same tribe. I don't know. I can't see her working with uh, Chaos Cast uh, just mm-hmm. because of the of that betrayal. But you never know. She might have been like let let that just be whatever, and um, th- she might work with her. I don't know. I I, I can't see that happening, but. 
she did win three individual media challenges out there. Uh, she's she's a strong woman. Mm -hmm. Do you remember anything uh, specifically about her? Uh, she she was she was a challenge piece, and that would do her well in the beginning of this game. Uh, and it will turn her into a target once they make the merge. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, now, does you remember so. that she's the only one that voted for Wu in their final tribal? So, um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe Wu may be like, hey, you know, um, you voted for me. Let, I'll, I'll, once they uh, tribal switch or something or they get merged or whatever, if Wu gets even that, even gets that far. But um, they, I don't know. He might, he might see like, hey, you voted for me, so I'll help. I'll, I'll help you out. I'll vote with you or whatever. Um, you never know. Um, you never know. But they're starting off as a tribe, so not initially. <laughs> yeah. So I really, really hope Natasha makes it far. She's one of my other uh, contestants that I really liked uh, from her initial season. Um, I just hoping she does well. Yep. And finally, we got Mr. Steven Fishbot. Who, Mr. Know It All. Mr. Know It All. We, uh, I think both of, both of us um, are big fans of, of Steven, uh, and um, he is a runner-up of Tokushin's uh, to JT. Um, mm -hmm. Now, he is very smart. He is yes. very savvy on Survivor. He has that podcast with Rob um, mm -hmm. about Survivor. And people know this. This, this is, not, a, this is that, not something that's he does. Rob's sister Nino, by the way, from Survivor Amazon Season 6. Yes. Um, they've been doing this uh, Know It All's podcast for the past, I believe, at least six or seven seasons. Yeah, so they've been doing this for a while, and, and he's, he's learned a lot through when he initially played and through talking about the other players. And I think he won't lose the money to bro code this time. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, he's another one of those players that, if he would have gone with the right person to the end, I think he could have won. But I mean, he was he went up against JT. Yeah. You're not gonna you're not gonna lose to JT. You're not gonna win against JT. You're gonna lose to JT. I would say ninety five percent of the time. Yep. You have um, to be someone like JT Tom. Was too or charming. Yeah, you have to be someone like Tom or or Terry to to uh, even go up with JT. Yep. Um, interestingly, I guess not interesting because it's pretty, it's a pretty obvious uh, thing that Andrew would have said. Andrew says that he's one of the people that he is targeting. He's on his hit list. Um, but so, the reason he said was that he, he thinks that Stephen is not trustworthy, which is, which is kind of a, a left fielder, which we're just kind of like, why, why would you say that about Stephen? He... He brought his bro to the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He could have got rid of him a long time before. Exactly. Yeah. So I don't know where that came from, um, with with Savage, but um, but Stephen knows he's a target coming into the game, and uh, everybody in the game, uh, pretty much everybody, thinks he's going to be a target during the game. But there's also another angle we need to think about that. He knows these players. He's analyzed some of these players, and he's analyzed. The, he analyzes the game well, and he knows the game very well. Uh, some of these players might be able to use this to to their advantage to use him in their alliance for information on other players on how they're going to play, and I think that will carry him through the beginning. I yeah. I hope. I'm I hoping. I think also that someone who knows that he knows all these people or at least not not necessarily uh, personally but at least um from a statistic point point um, for survivor can use that to their advantage but also since he is a target they can use him as a shield keep him keep him along as uh, as long as they need to to throw votes um to vote with him or maybe even it, when it gets to the point throw him under the bus oh yeah um, but i but he's not. He's not a. He's he's not a. He's not a dumb player. He's gonna get. No, he's, if you if you if you give him the chance, he's gonna he's gonna get in there. He will make the way, and he's one of my favorite uh, past survivors. Um, mm -hmm. I really really hope he does well and makes it at least to the merge. I'm hoping he makes it to the merge, and then from there that he can run his game the way he wants to run the game. 
Yeah. All right. Do you have any um, any more um, anything else to say about any of the people that we've talked about so far? Um, well, we mentioned um, Rob's podcast a little bit, and uh, some of these players are almost regulars on his show. They they go on at least a couple times a year. Uh, and, and they know each other pretty well. And I think the way the tribes are split here, this might be fan fiction, but um, I think they might have tried to split some of the players through that line, through through that, because um, they don't want a whole bunch of people from Rob Has a Podcast all on the same tribe, because it'll, they'll just run them over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some of the yeah. players might get run over. Yeah. So I, I think they split the tribes strategically that way so not all of Rob's posse is in the same tribe, the same tribe. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay so I mean um, we, we analyzed the, the whole I don't know if analyze is a, is a thing but we talked about at least um, the whole cast of, of the season and yep. um, we were gonna go ahead and do something uh, fun for for us we're gonna we're gonna do a fantasy survivor um, pick we're gonna do a draft right now, where yep. we will be um, taking points, and we'll we'll talk about the point system and so forth. Um, but we did it. We did a um, like a paper rock scissors kind of thing off camera. So I mm -hmm. will be the uh, the first one in the draft. Um, and from the existing pool right now, since I have all twenty, uh, I'm actually gonna go ahead and um, choose uh, Jeremy for my first pick. Okay. And um, Mark, who, who do you have? Uh, Jer Jeremy would have been good on my team. But um, I need to take her off the list because I know you'll pick her. So my first pick is going to be Peiji, <laughs> Peiji Law from China. Uh, I, I, I think she's, she's, she's ready. She's mentally ready. Uh, and... Uh, I, I think she'll be a real threat in this game. I'm, I'm looking forward to what she does. And since we're doing snake drafts, I guess I had the next pick as well. Um, we decided to alternate between guys and girls. Um, so my next pick is going to be Terry Dietz from Panama. Uh, physically fit, uh, mentally ready. I, I think he's, I think he's the complete package. I think he can go pretty far in this game as well. Well, you got two of my um, my favorites there. <laughs> so you did, you did take uh, two uh, two of my people, but um, I will like now that I'm switching um, my turn again, and I'm gonna pick a, a female. I will pick uh, Tasha. Um, she's strong. She's a beast in the challenges, I'll, and I really, really do hope that he's gonna go far. And with my um, male pick, I will do Andrew Savage. Um, Savage. Savage, the leader. So. Uh, hopefully he stays in there long enough for get me some good points. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Savage shouldn't be immediately a threat, so I, I think Savage is a good pick. And my turn um, to go with a girl here. I'm gonna go with Sierra. Sierra. Yeah. Uh, I honestly don't know why I'm picking her. Just because, <laughs> just because, I guess. Well, remember, um, I, we I think we both said that if she can get into into a place uh, into an alliance, I think she can go far if, as long as she doesn't cause too much trouble. Yeah, yeah. So now you have a a male you can choose. I'm gonna go with Jeff Warner. Jeff. <laughs> mm -hmm. Would have been another one that I would have I would have chosen. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Preseason Alliance. I think it'll be very exciting to see what he does. So, Okie dokie. Your turn. Okay. Um, it's kind of hard to pick a female because most of them are, are, can be trouble if they get, if they get upset. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think I'm going to go with I'm playing it safe here with uh, Monica Padilla. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I, I didn't really have much to say about her. Um, Picking her just to see if I can. Uh, hopefully, she can stay under the radar, won't get into trouble, and and get me uh, a couple more 
one of those uh, fantasy points there. She's a she's a safe pick. She's At safe. least she'll go through a couple of trouble councils and get you a few points there. I think. Yeah. Yep. Okay, and then for my final male, um, I have uh, Spencer Bledsoe. Oh. <laughs> oh, what you smart. do that? Oh my God. Spencer. Uh, yeah, <sighs> I'm gonna go with Spencer. He's smart. I think. Even though I was kind of scared he might go fast, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, risk it and I'll, I'll go with him, and uh, hopefully he'll give me a lot of points. Ay yeah yeah, ay yeah yeah, Dios mío. Um, so with my final female pick, I'm gonna go so far out there. Nobody's gonna see this coming. I'm gonna blindside you with. Kelly Wigglesworth. <laughs> okay, okay, I, I can see that. I can see that. Uh, I think um, even though she seems like she doesn't care about what's going on, I think she's going to be a force in the game. Yeah, I, I, I mentioned when we were talking about her, I mentioned that, that she she tries to, I, I, it looks like she was trying to fake that she doesn't care what's going to happen, but she's a businesswoman. She, she's going to care. She, she cares. And, and she's going to do whatever it takes. Uh, and, and people are going to flock to her because she is from the original season. I think people are going to see that as a storyline as well. How, how, did she, how did she adapt to this new game after playing that very first season? Yeah. And air, the airtime factor is there as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to complete my list with... Steven. Steven. Fishbach. Uh, he, he knows the game. He is going to know how to play it. Uh, people are going to try to go to him for strategic pointers, I think. And for a, start of, a, a starting list, I think. I, now I feel iffy about it. No, I yeah. think you know what? Yeah, Steven Steven's gonna be good. No, I think yeah, I think you're weeks. I think you're good. I think he I think he'll make it past past the first couple of episodes at least. Um, <laughs> that doesn't say a lot though, if we're only saying he's gonna make it <laughs> to the first couple episodes. Yeah. <laughs> it's not saying a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so then the, my last pick, uh, once again the female, um, you really got the ones that I wanted first off right away off the bat. Um, I will go with another safe pick in uh, Kelly Wentworth. Um, pretty much, uh, as long as she can stay quiet, she'll, she's a safe pick for me. Um, hopefully she'll keep her intelligence um, and her strategy game down a little bit so she won't be a target and then just go, go through the rest of the game and um, yeah. just show how, how smart she is. Yeah, she needs to just take a nap until the merge. That's, that's why I think. <laughs> she can just, just, just stay quiet, just zip it to the merge. I think she'll be just fine. Okay, so... There, there are bigger targets than her. Yes, much bigger targets. very big targets. Yep. So uh, one of the things that we're going to go ahead and do with these fantasy points is we're going to pick a first uh, person voted out. Uh, uh, we're going to call this our, our killer choice for each week. We're gonna pick the person we think is gonna get voted out, and depending on placing, um, the the placing that they get is the number of points that we're also gonna get if we predict correctly. So, for this first episode, um, whoever's first voted out will be twentieth place. So, if we pick correctly here, it'll be worth twenty points, which will give us a good lead. So, uh, you want to pick first, or you want me to pick first? Um, I'll let you pick first. <laughs> okay, so. There are lots of fiery uh, personalities here that are good picks. Um, some of my top choices would be Abby Maria, Shirin, maybe Keith or Cass. Um, but uh, ooh. challenge wise, I think. People think, you know, screw it. I'm, I'm going to go with Abby Maria. I'm going to take Abby Maria as first out. That was one of the people that I was thinking as well. But I think, um, 
I think Cass is gonna go too yeah. too too hard too fast, um, and I I don't I really don't think uh, Savage is gonna keep her around. Um, so oh, I'm guessing I'm going with that Bayonne is gonna lose the first tribal <laughs> the first challenge and go to tribe tribal uh, tribal uh, council. So um, I am picking Cass to go first. You're picking Cass, which yes. I also think is a good choice. <laughs> <laughs> For all the reasons we talked about already. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so now we're gonna go ahead and do a uh, season winner. Do you have a? Uh, do you want me to go first on this one? Yeah, you go ahead. Okay. So, out of all the things that I've talked, and I think I gave a little bit of a in indica indication who I was choosing for here, and I chose him on my team. I really, really think that Jeremy can can win this uh, if he stays in the right lines. Um, hopefully he doesn't get he doesn't get first vote out because we added a, um, a another bonus uh, penalty if whoever we pick is a first voted out we lose an additional ten points. <laughs> so who do you have? Oh uh, yeah. Who do you uh, have uh, winning? Ooh. Uh. I mean, I, I really don't want to say this because some of my personal favorites are. I, I, I don't know if they're gonna go that far into the game. But uh, you know what, ride or die, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Paige. Good pick, actually, good pick. Okay, yeah. so um, our point system will will um, you'll be seeing it on screen. So you can um, you can see how we're going to be scoring these um, every week, and um, we'll we'll keep you up to date as far as uh, who who has what points and uh, who's winning and so forth. Uh, to go ahead and close out this uh, first show, uh, do you have any anything else that you want to close up on or uh, wrap up with? Uh, I think this is going to be a very exciting season. Uh, with this cast, anything is possible, and I think we're going to see a lot of blind sides. You're gonna see a lot of fake idols. Uh, it's 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 gonna be sweet. And with some of the stuff that, with the amount of interaction that the players are, um, are are taking already on social media, I, I think they're getting pumped as well to to see how this season plays out. And this will be the season to watch. Definitely, definitely. I can't wait for it to start. It's gonna start in a couple of days already. Um, yep. I have my DVR set up. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just be pumped. I'm gonna be excited all week for waiting for it to start. Um, I yeah. can't, I can't. I'm excited for it. It's a new concept. Hopefully, they do this later on. Um, can't wait for, can't wait for it. And yep. And that that will, will wrap up here um, for this for this show. And we will see you every week. Um, we'll go ahead and just go through the every episode and uh, talk about and an update. We'll keep you up to date on our fantasy game. Um, Mark, where can uh, we find you again? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at MarcoPolo310. And uh, once again, my name is Saul. You can find me at, uh, on, per, um, on Twitter at Perspective. And um, tweet at us if you have any, any uh, insight or uh, any questions or any comments about the show. Thank you very much, and we'll see you guys next week.